Hi there, thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to be talking about properties um, of estimators. And so what does it mean to be a good estimator, um, essentially? So just whenever we think about econometrics, I always want you to have in the back of your head that we're thinking about um, a population. And in that population, we know that there's some sort of process and there is some sort of population parameter which quantifies the effect of the variable which we're considering within the population. Then from that population, um, we're going to think about taking repeated samples. So the first one we call S1, the second one S2, S3. We take sort of N samples where N is quite a big number. On, and on each of those samples, we use our estimator, so our mathematical function, to come up with estimates of the population parameter. So this is just a value. So in the first um, sample, we use our estimator and it comes out with beta 1 star. In the second one, beta 2 star. Third one, beta 3 star, etc. All the way up to sort of beta n star. And note that each of these individual estimates, which we get by applying our estimator function to each of the sample data, is not going to be exactly equal to the population parameter due to sampling error. And that's because essentially each of the samples doesn't, isn't quite representative of exactly what's going on in our population. So perhaps um, we get maybe sort of um, 10 instances of beta 1 star, we get maybe um, only 3 instances of beta 2 star, for example. So this is a frequency plot of all the different values of um, beta star, which we have got from applying our estimator to repeated samples. Well. One property we would quite like our estimator to have is that on average, we would hope that it gets it exactly right. So we would hope that it, on average, our estimator outputs the population parameter. So that's signified in a sort of frequency graph by having a sort of maximum when beta star is equal to beta p. Or mathematically, the way we can think about that is that the expectation out of our estimator, so the expectation of our function, um, is equal to the population parameter. This actually has a name in econometrics, and we call this property um, unbiasedness, or just our estimators are unbiased. The second property which we want to talk about is something which we call consistency. So that means that if I was to increase mount my uh, sample size, I would hope that I get a higher proportion of values of beta star which are closer to the population parameter. So maybe this second graph which I've drawn, uh, drawn on here is for a thousand individuals and this one is for a hundred. And notice, although I haven't drawn it absolutely perfectly, it should probably be a little bit more sort of steep at the top. And notice that as I've increased the sample size, the values which I get for beta star are closer and closer to, to the true population parameter. In fact, as we increase our sample size arbitrarily, we would sort of hope that we wouldn't get a distribution, we would just sort of get a line at beta p. So this property, if I sort of stated mathematically, means that as our sample size tends to infinity, our estimator tends in value to the true population parameter. So this is a property which we call um, consistency of estimators. So consistency is definitely a property which we would like a sort of good estimator to have, which means that if I arbitrarily increase my sample size, so in this context, as I let sort of n go to infinity, or practically what that means is as I increase my sample size closer and closer to the population, um, so it's actually just population rather than just a sample, I get a value of 
my which, which is outputted from my estimator which is closer and closer to the population value. So this is definitely a property we would like to have. We're going to talk about a sort of last property we would like a good estimator to have, which is something which we call efficiency in future videos.